Obtaining nearly pure iron from Regolith is actually quite easy. You can just beneficiate free iron using the methods proposed in this paper from 1981, which uses impact milling and centrifugal magnetic separation to recover 90% pure iron. This method is easy, so it is likely the best early strategy. However, it's only able to recover free iron, which makes up just 0.5% of the regolith mass, so it does nothing for the remaining 99.5% of regolith, of which 11.5% is mineralized iron. That's literally two sentences for an entire paper. Well, okay, to be fair, half this paper actually consists of outdated cost estimations and ideas regarding the creation of Earth-based regolith simulants, so half of it is as outdated as the typewriter it was written on, but still. The beneficiation process proposed is so easy, it would be a really good way to get lots of iron right off the bat early on. So the two pages which describe it are worthy of more than two sentences. But I didn't dig into the technical details because that video was on refining regolith, not beneficiation. Sure, beneficiation and refining go hand in hand, which is why I did mention it, but going off on a tangent to explain more in depth would have thrown off the flow of the video, which was focused on purifying everything out of regolith, the oxygen, silicon, aluminum, titanium, sodium, and more, not just the iron. And the downside to Augusto's proposed process is that it only pulls out the free iron, which is just 4% of the total iron found in regolith, most of which is mineralized, and counting everything else, it's only 0.5% of the total regolith mass. That leftover 99.5% is useful stuff we also want, but this system's stupid simplicity means it can only pull out the easy stuff a little bit at a time and discard the rest which is what I've basically been doing with great papers. So in the spirit of maximizing utility, I've decided to start doing paper summary videos in between main videos because why throw away gold? Instead of discarding ideas that don't make the final cut to my PDF collection, I'll package them into standalone discussions which can help us construct a vision of the future. Okay, so these paper review videos are going to be a bit looser and more conversational in nature. I'm still going to give them strong effort and attention, but the whole idea is for them to be shorter and easier to make. But that means I won't be able to spend weeks refining every idea in the crucible of debate, turning every stone. So they'll take on a more exploratory, idea-oriented, brainstorm kind of tone. This paper has a lot of specifications that the author included because part of his goal was to show the feasibility of this process by using off-the-shelf parts. So he includes things like flow rates based on specific commercial equipment. But since that was over 42 years ago, we're just going to ignore those and instead focus on the underlying core concepts. First, the lunar regolith is screened to a specific size and fed into a low-intensity drum magnetic separator. This step removes almost everything, anything that is non-magnetic which will be most of the input or just weakly magnetic material, leaving only the grains of regolith that have enough concentrated iron to be magnetic. But the metal in these grains is frozen and agglutinates, basically melted glass which needs to be broken open. So the magnetic grains are fed into an impact mill that uses a high-speed rotating disc to accelerate the feed against a circumferential impact block. The particle size can be controlled by adjusting the rotation speed. This grinding process flattens the metal particles, breaking them free. After grinding, the material is screened once again to separate the liberated and flattened metal particles from the smaller, shattered waste material, and then a final magnetic separating step is employed using the same type of magnetic drum separator as before to further purify the metal. At this step you could also use electrostatic separation like tribo charging but the magnetic drum is probably simplest. The end product is a purified metal feedstock containing discrete iron nickel particles. So it's a pretty simple straightforward way to gather up tons of iron quite quickly. This whole system could probably be fully automated so you could send it to a site a few months before arrival and when you show up you'll have literal tons of purified iron ready and waiting. Augusto estimated that his specific system made of commercial components from 1981 could produce 184 kilograms of pure metal per hour, about 4.5 metric tons every 24 hours of operation. But considering this would be about 0.5% of the total processed regolith, we would have to feed it about 36,800 kilograms of regolith 
per hour to achieve this rate, which is in itself a challenge. For this reason, I think it makes the most sense that this system would be a vehicle itself that can just comb the lunar surface, ingesting regolith in one end, spitting it out the other, rather than having other vehicles expend energy to carry tons of regolith, most of which won't even be used, to a stationary processing location. My logic here is that the vast majority of the regolith, 99% by weight, will be spat back out immediately on the second step as the non-magnetic fraction. It's nothing special save for a slight improvement over basic regolith due to the screening step. So it's definitely not worth spending the energy to transport it long distances. Pick it up and get rid of it as quickly as possible. This can only be done if the system is, itself, a vehicle. Sure, we still spent a little energy scooping it up in the first place and screening it, maybe crushing it a little beforehand, but that's just the cost of doing business. But it's a different story for the non-metal regolith that came out after the impact milling step. It will have been turned into a very fine powder, which would make for an ideal feedstock for refining or for more precise centering applications, such as the creation of thin ceramics for ball bearings or gears. So we might consider spending the energy to carry it back to our production base, and maybe we can think of this as the first step in the refining pipeline early on. We're talking much more near term here, and once you start laying down rails left and right, it won't make sense to use this vehicle anymore, as you could then transport tons of regolith via rail, which would be much cheaper, and flip the equation of this being a vehicle versus a stationary system that is fed regolith by other vehicles. But to lay down rails left and right, you have to first gather a bunch of iron, and I definitely think this approach is a very promising way to do that. Also, by the time you can do things like bucket chain excavators, you could just refine massive tons of bulk regolith directly. Let me know what y'all think about this kind of video, if y'all have any cool ideas regarding the topic discussed, and as always, thanks for watching.